Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. Today we're going to be going over how to make a quick procedural train setup in Houdini. This of course could be used to make any sort of procedural rail system with something traveling along it, but you can take the principles that we use here and explore them afterwards. Alright, let's just get into it. First, we wanted to find the shape. The way with the most control or just easiest to use is the draw curve node. So I'm going to drop that and set the projection to the ZX plane so that it's flat on the ground. And then just go ahead and draw a basic shape for our train path. And make sure towards the end of it that it's close to where you started. Next I'm just going to clean up the points because you can see it makes some kind of wonky ones. Uh, using a resample setting the length to something like 0.5 to just define the basic shape. And next to close this uh, gap that we have from the start and end point, I'm just going to do a fuse node and just slowly raise it until it merges together. Next I'm going to do a smooth node just to kill some of the sharp edges that we're getting and then do another resample and with a length of 0.18 to just add more points. I'm going to change the tree polygons as to subdivision curves which again just kind of smooths it out a little bit more. And then just going to do one more fuse node and this is because if you come in and see or turn on point numbers first you can see that the resample actually disconnects that start point so we just want to merge it back together again so it's one closed loop. Now we're going to turn this spline into trails. So make a line and copy it to points. Uh, now it just goes straight up so in the line I'm going to change the direction to 1 in the x and 0 in the y and it's still not looking right because it's not actually turning around these curves. So we want to find a way to do that. So I'm going to drop a polyframe node. And again, you see nothing happens. So to get the direction, we're actually going to want to use this tangent measurement that it does. So we're going to uncheck that normal and change the tangent name to normal. So we set the normal value to the tangent value. And you can see that it actually starts to like bank around the corners. And if you look at that, I mean, one thing we need to make sure is that the train is facing upwards. Uh, so we're going to make an attribute create called up, which is a Houdini global variable with a size of three and set it to one in the Y. There's a chance your spline was automatically facing this way anyway, and you don't need this, but this is just a fail safe. Now we want our line to be centered on the curve instead of coming out this edge. So I'm going to copy the length and paste relative reference into the origin X and just divide that by two so that it centers, put a negative in the front. And I'm also gonna go ahead and make the length just 0.5. Now we'll do the two rails on the outside of these rungs. So make a group and change it to points and select the zero point. Now after the copy to points, make a split and select that group we just made. And now just make an add node go to polygons and by group and check on closed and then I'll drag that to the other side of the split and merge the two together and just drop a poly wire and you can see that we have our rails on the outside bring the radius down a little bit and I'm just going to copy our poly wire over to the inner rungs as well and just make it a little bit thinner now if you just merge the two together, you can see that we have the rail system set up. So we're going to move forward and make the train following along the path now. Alright, for a basic car, we're just going to start with a box and make it a little bit longer in the Z. And then just copy paste that reference into the Y into the center and divide it by two. And now blast the zero point from the rails, checking on delete on selected, and then copy the box onto the points. And it's a little big, so I'm just gonna do a transform and scale it down a bit. Now we're gonna make it move. So if you look at our rail and turn on point numbers, 
um, before the blast node, we're going to drop a sort. Now in the point sort, you're going to change it to shift. And if you slide this around, you can see that it's changing the numbers, moving them one point at a time. So we're just going to throw on an expression, $f, and that'll make it constantly be moving around. Now, since that zero point is going around, uh, so will our train. So now let's just give our train some more cars. So initially, you'd think maybe just drop a copy transform after the box and move the cars back in Z. But of course, this isn't going to work because as you go around the corners, it's not going to be turning. It's just going to be turning out based on the front one. So the way we can solve this is using a for each loop. So after the sort, uh, type for each, and you're going to select this number option. And this is because it's going to create this detail node, which we're going to just name info. So drag the blast node of the zero point into that loop. And it looks like it's not doing anything, even though you can see that we actually have 10 points since that's how it's set here at the end of the for each loop. That's because they're all in the same place. So we're going to make another sort node, setting it to shift. And we're going to grab that iteration attribute that is made here in the info node. So just type detail. Uh, open parentheses, info, and then iteration, and zero. And you can start to see that something is happening. And the problem here is that it's only offsetting it by one point. But our train is longer than that, so we're going to need to multiply this by a number that separates them just to your liking visually. Um, in our case, I'm going to try negative eight. And the negative is so that the copies go behind the leader. Now, if you hit play, you can see we have our train circling around the loop. And there you have it. This is just our basic train setup tool. Of course, you could add more detail to the cars, uh, use a point VOP and the curve view to have the tracks go up and down. There's a ton of things you can try. So have fun with this one. Uh, as always, we'd love to hear if there are any effects you'd like to see tutorials for in the future. Uh, the project files for this are on our site. Hope you enjoyed this one, and until next time.